Hello, everyone. Um, this is Fernando Valenzuela. I thank the International Eczema Council for being present at RADLA and for this invitation. Today, I will discuss with you what's new in systemic treatments in atopic dermatitis. These are my conflict of interest. I work in clinical trials, so I have access to most of the drugs I will discuss with you today. We know that atopic dermatitis is a quite prevalent inflammatory skin condition, and depending on the severity, can cause enormous morbidity. And we also know that uh, we can use corticosteroids, UV therapy, and systemic immunosuppressions. And these have been the standard of care for the moderate to severe atopic dermatitis patients. But we also know that they all have side effects, and some of them are difficult to, to treat. So the desire of target treatments with a um, better understanding on atopic dermatitis pathophysiology has uh, developed new drugs, and those are the ones that we will discuss today. So we will uh, talk about um, the monoclonal antibodies, but also the small molecules. Some of them are available uh, in the market in some of the countries, some of them not. Um, and of course, I don't have a lot of time uh, for uh, talking one by one uh, along, but you will have all the references. And also this is recorded so you can go back anytime you, you need it. So let's start with the pathophysiology uh, because we have uh, discovered and now we understand better how atopic dermatitis, uh, dermatitis works and all the interleukins and all the receptors. And uh, we can now try to cut those inflammatory pathways uh, in a better way. And uh, for sure being more specific and uh, um, that also means that we are getting safer treatments for the patients. Let's start with the monoclonal antibodies uh, and we will discuss this. First uh, is dupilumab. Uh, we all know because it's available in almost all of our countries, but uh, we will also discuss some of the other um, new um, monoclonal antibodies, levipizumab and talokinumab. First, um, DUPI, we all know that it's a fully human monoclonal antibody and it's able to inhibit interleukin-4 and interleukin-13. Um, and this is because it can, uh, uh, you know, it, it can block the um, interleukin-4 receptor. And this is the summary of the SOLO1, SOLO2, and Kronos uh, clinical trials, um, where you can see that uh, Jupilumab works uh, alone and in addition to um, corticosteroids, uh, topical ones. So uh, we have used uh, Jupilumab for a while, and uh, this was the first molecule available in like this new era of treatment for atopic dermatitis. But we have more. We have talukinumab, which is a humanized monoclonal IgG4 antibody. This neutralizes only interleukin-13. And you can see that uh, when we use uh, talukinumab and uh, the topical corticosteroids, 56% of the patients uh, can achieve a 75 uh, reduction in the amount of eczema in 16 weeks. Um, and this is superior to placebo plus the uh, topical corticosteroids. Uh, and here you can see the rate response on EC50, EC75, and score at 50. So uh, talukinumab uh, is available in some of our countries. And uh, for adult patients, uh, you can start with 600 milligrams. So it's four injections because each one is uh, 150 milligrams. And then you have to follow up with uh, 300 milligrams every other week. And this is subcutaneous. And here you can see um, the common side effects. 
which are uh, really mild and not difficult to treat. But we also have Levrikizumab, sorry, you know, all the names are difficult. And Levrikizumab, uh, it's a monoclonal antibody which uh, binds interleukin-13 and inhibit the dimerization of the receptor of interleukin-13 and interleukin-4. You can see here how it works in um, EC50, C75, IgA0 or 1, and the, the, the diminish of pruritus. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's a very good uh, molecule. And here you can also see how it works, um, improving uh, EC50, EC75, IgA0 or 1 or score at 50 uh, versus placebo. And the, the, late, uh, the uh, last one uh, will be nemolizumab, uh, which is another monoclonal antibody and that binds interleukin 31 receptor. And, and we know that uh, this interleukin 31, it's uh, connected with pruritus. So uh, you can see how the EC score diminished uh, through time. It's very quick. You can see a difference in week one and it continue improving uh, through in, uh, week 24, but also uh, diminishing the um, sensation of pruritus. You can see how the PP and RS response is much better in nemolizumab patients compared to placebo. This drug is not available yet, but uh, I think it's a promising one. Let's go to uh, small molecules. And here uh, we will talk about JAK inhibitors. We know that uh, important interleukins such as interleukin-4 and interleukin-13, they work through JAK uh, and, and or TIC uh, pathways. And so as we have um, blocked the pathway, uh, in monoclonal antibodies, we also can block partially the pathway using JAK inhibitors. And here are, you can see how the different JAK and TIC2, which is also a JAK um, kinase, um, how they work and which are the important ones in the atopic dermatitis. And you can see that JAK1 and JAK2 are really the ones that uh, we have to or we have to try to block in order to uh, improve atopic dermatitis. But if you block JAK2 in, in a way, you can have uh, problems because, uh, you know, it uh, can cause anemia and other problems with uh, red and black and white cells. So uh, we have to try to block it, but not, not uh, not block it completely. So there are some uh, JAK inhibitors here. And the first one that I will show you, it's baricitinib. This is uh, for sure, these small molecules can be oral and some of them for another uh, indications are also topical. Um, and baricitinib, it uh, um, inhibits selectively JAK1 and JAK2. And you can see here how it works. Um, it's, uh, it's really promising uh, compared to placebo when we use it also with topical corticosteroids. Again, um, patients uh, achieving IgA0 or 1 in 16 weeks, 24% in the high dose of baricitinib, not bad at all, compared with only 5% in, uh, in the cohort of patients using placebo. And we have another one. Uh, this is aprocitinib. This is also an oral small molecule and, and aprocitinib only inhibits JAK1. And here you can see uh, EC75 score at, at 12 weeks, 63%. EC90 score, 39%. So it's, it's, it's a very good response. Uh, 
And uh, you can see here, uh, compared with Filumav, this um, trial, and this demonstrate that the high dose, so abrocitinib 200 milligrams, uh, was even better than Jopilumab. So uh, it's it's a, a pretty good response uh, of this oral uh, small molecule. Um, abrocitinib has also been approved in some of our countries and um, the dosage is uh, 100 milligrams a day for 12 weeks. If you don't have the response you, you want, you can increase to 200 milligrams uh, per day. And the side effects are uh, listed here, and you can see they are not so, so um, difficult to treat or not so encouraging for us. We also have another uh, small molecule, uh, also selective to JAK1 in inhibition, and this is upadacitinib. And here you can see in measure up one and two how uh, Ubadacitinib works and it was really uh, graded than placebo, all the responses here in, in this protocol. Again, Ubadacitinib versus placebo in EC50, EC75, EC90, and you can see that uh, all of them are um, quite well, actually, EC75, 78%. Uh, and, and for sure better than placebo. And upadacitinib is also available in some of our countries. Um, it's uh, 50 milligrams per day, uh, and you can increase to 30 milligrams per day if you have a, a patient with not a good response. And here you can see that the side effects are also mild, not, not, uh, not so complicated at all and comparable. To, to another drugs uh, of the same family. So uh, this is what's new in atopic dermatitis. I hope you really uh, enjoyed the presentation and also uh, I really hope you enjoyed the rest of the RADLA meeting. Thanks for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, uh, write an email. This is my email address and more than happy to to help.